Okay. Hey everybody, it's November 7th and you are here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. Happy to see everybody here as always. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. My day has not been too bad. It's voting day here in the States and I have not gone to vote yet. So I will do that after this meeting. So if you're not in the all, state, Not all of us have a- Not all, like, you not don't have a, Nothing, sometimes there's just not nothing to vote on. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I actually have no idea if there's anything to vote on here. I need to check the internet. <laughs> oh, yes, you should. You should exercise your rights. We, it's a big, big voting day here in Ohio. There's some really big um, things, things on the ballot. Yeah. So yeah, I will definitely be out there um, exercising my right to vote. So going to the church basement. Yeah. yeah. It's so <laughs> weird how we use churches as voting places. I go to a school, thankfully. I don't have that. Okay. I've been to many a church basements. So <laughs> it's very bizarre. Um, okay, let me share my screen here. We have, um, as I was saying before, we started the meeting, we actually have a pretty light agenda. So if there's something that's been on your mind and you want to bring it up today, happy to have that conversation. Um, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct. So please just make sure that you have read this. It's right here. Um, we mention it every time, but I'll just mention it again, just in case just so you kind of know what's expected of your behavior here whenever you interact with our community. And of course, if you would not like to have your camera on, that is totally fine. And you are welcome to keep your mic off as well. You can just chat with us over on the side. We'll, we will do our best to incorporate that in the flow of the meeting. So, and yeah, if somebody can just make sure that um, if new people come, if you can just drop in the minutes for them periodically, it would be great. Uh, here are here they are the minutes such as they are if you would like to add your name and tell us something that you see outside your window right now that'd be cool. We always like to kind of see what where people are coming from and what they see outside their window. Um, this is a, a graphic here that I think Matt has to, to give us some context around because it's kind of interesting. Yes, I would just like to this is the international dateline for folks. And I learned this yesterday that there is a time in the day at 10 a.m. in the UK where there are actually three days on Earth. So because of this dateline, it could be Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the UK, like today, like just an hour ago. And it would be Tuesday at, no, it would be Wednesday <laughs> at midnight to 1 a.m. in some location because of this. <laughs> and it would actually be Monday at 11 p.m. because of this. Oh, wait, Monday because of this. Am I, I'm getting my dates all wrong. So it's <laughs> Tuesday at 10. It's actually Monday somewhere and it's Wednesday somewhere <laughs> at 10 a.m. UK time. I so just... there is actually a point in the day. <laughs> That's that's wild. I, I, uh, I needed more detailed explanation. I put a link in a footnote. Um, apparently, this is part of a railway exam. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. If you want to be an en engineer, what? <laughs> like a railway exam. Observe three days like for, at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. If you yeah. scroll down, Elizabeth. It's in a footnote. I put it in a footnote. Yeah. I don't know. I should maybe put it closer to the picture. Yeah, this is my nightmare. Literally, would be my nightmare if we were trying to schedule a meeting. Well, then you've been doing all this stuff. This is kind of what <laughs> why it seems very appropriate, right? <laughs> and it happens every day. Like, yeah, every I, who day. knew that there were there was a time every day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. This is it. So gets weirder. It gets weirder at the bottom of the page. I don't think I can handle this right now. Yeah. I need more coffee for this. Time does not exist at the polls. No morning. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm glad we don't have anybody who lives up there because they would never make yeah. it. No. <laughs> How would you even know? How would you even know? <laughs> 
Uh, I kind of dig that though. I kind of like that yeah. thought of just like just do do it whenever you want. Just eat whenever you want. Sleep. I love it. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, my audio is working. I wasn't sure. So does that mean since Santa lives at the North Pole that he does not exist in a time zone? That's why he doesn't ex that's why he doesn't age. Time oh. never passes. <laughs> All right. Well, how does he know when to deliver the presents then? Maybe he Text. has elves that are his little timekeepers that live in other places. I don't know. They live two feet south of the North Pole. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> all around him in a circle so they can <laughs> lift up. okay anyway yeah <laughs> rabbit hole i did not expect today so thanks matt that's actually cool. that's actually pretty cool and that's a bit of trivia that i'm gonna pull out sometime at a party and i'm gonna look really cool <laughs> you're gonna explain it like i did after you had like a drink and you'll be like oh <laughs> never mind <laughs> <laughs> Does Santa have daylight savings? Oh my goodness. I oh, I don't even know. <laughs> How would we know? And if he if he lives underground instead of above ground for some reason, Ooh. does does there have any other differences underground? Yeah, if he's subterranean. I don't know. I don't know. That's like it's a question maybe we should bring up at um, Chaos Con as a topic of discussion, the different time space continuum of Santa land. I don't know. <laughs> Above, below. Yeah, it's a deep, it's a deep topic for sure. Um, okay. All right. Well, that was fun. Thanks, Matt. Sure. Maybe we should do this every time. Somebody bring like a interesting trivia and we talk about it. I feel like I've learned something today. So I think that's good. It's a good use of our time. Uh, especially when we have a light agenda like this. Because um, you know what? These meetings used to just be a hangout where we just hung out, right? Like we didn't, I mean, we had a few things, but it was mostly just to like bond with each other. So we've, we've been bonded now after that little exercise. Um, but okay, we do have stuff. I just wanted to remind people because of the daylight savings time change, just, um, you know, check the calendar. If you're not sure, check the calendar. I've already seen a couple of um, popping in and out of places. Uh, so I, it happens. And also don't feel bad. If you pop into the wrong meeting, don't feel bad. It's fine. We don't care. We're not going to be mad at you. I'll feel bad for you because you will have wasted your time. But no, nobody will feel bad. Um, and then speaking of calendars, um, I made the executive decision all by myself, sorry, community, to cancel this meeting on November 21st, because that is the week of US Thanksgiving and people are traveling and this and that. We did not really make a, an official statement about chaos meetings that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, or Thursday meetings definitely canceled that week. I'm pretty um, sure we don't normally have them. It just seems like they would be light anyway. And yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, like I've got family coming into town that day. So like I'm not Yeah. It's not attending those meetings. So Yeah, my mom's having eye surgery that week. So I'm attending to her a lot. So that well, would be Tuesday would only be it would be the newcomer meeting. It would be yeah. um the metric model meeting, which we already canceled. It would be this meeting. And then Wednesday, it's certainly like... meetings on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. And then Let's Monday, we don't really have meetings. Mm -hmm. Let's just make no chaos meetings. Yeah. We go. November 21st. Awesome. And then as Sean pointed out, there is a t there's like a whole week or two in between that and when we actually take our long break. So it, it will be a chance for all of the groups to connect again. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of weeks in there. So definitely um, the bi-weekly meetings will have one of those few yep. weeks to meet. So. Yep. And you know, if people are around and they wanna do stuff asynchronously, that's totally fine. That's 100% fine. Yep. Black or whatever, yeah. Okay, cool. And Thank then you. of course this, and so I will uh, actually, 
I took some of them off. I took the metrics model one off, but I'll yeah, take them off. Yeah, there's still a couple on there. And all of these have been taken off already. You might want to just connect with, um, there's the Chaos Africa developer sync, connect with Ruth. Yes. That's on Wednesday. And then app ecosystem. Yeah, I'll make sure they know. I mean, and I guess if they want to keep having it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But I think these, we, we kind of embrace this just so we keep our community from really burning out. Yeah, no, we do this all this. We've doing, done this for honestly like eight years. Yeah, I really love it. I really, really yeah. love it. Because um, I think yeah. everybody needs a break and things get busy at the end of the year and um, people are tired, you know, I love yeah. it. I think we tried the first year and <laughs> there were like just like me yeah. And in a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, I mean you guys can keep <laughs> No, it's all right. <laughs> the Zoom link will be open, but <laughs> yeah. we'll be alone. If you want to meet with yourself, you can do that. Um, okay, so any questions about any of this? Any concerns anybody has about a meeting that they're not sure about or questions? Okay, I don't say anything. Um, okay, just want to remind everybody if you're interested in um, attending ChaosCon EU, it's on February 1st, two days before FOSTEM in Brussels. We did open registration up. Registration is $10 US. Um, and we do have um, an agenda put out. Um, actually, I just need to fix this here because we know who this is. Mm -hmm. Let me make a note here. I fixed it on our site, which is, oh, on the chaos site. Yep. Um, so here it is. If you want more information, I should also drop this in the agenda here. Elizabeth, have you heard from anybody that like wants to attend, but just cannot financially? Not no, not yet. Okay. Um, but we do have the diversity access tickets listed up here. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone is interested in, in getting one of these or learning more about that, you can just email me and I can send you information about that. Um, and sponsorship is also open. So if you are working for a company or an organization that does this, uh, we would be honored if you would like to sponsor and help us kind of defer some of those costs. Because um, it does cost us a little bit of money to put these on. We, we want to keep those tickets low, the price low, so that it's accessible for people. Um, and here's the sponsorship prospectus. You can kind of see what um, that looks like. They're really reasonable. I mean, some of the some conferences <laughs> the sponsorship packages are like thirty thousand dollars. So, like, no, this isn't how we roll. It's it's a small conference on purpose, and um, so we try to keep things pretty reasonable. But again, we do have some costs, and we're also trying to maybe get an extra room for some afternoon things, um, which costs money, and I don't know if we're gonna have it. So, yeah. Yeah, I know I, we don't have to like have a chaos con meeting like after today, but because a lot of people aren't here. We're missing well. people, yeah. Um, but we do, I think we do need to sort out that room. I'm, I, we need to sort out the afternoon and how we want to yeah. do it. There was some good discussion in Slack about it yesterday. So okay. where is it? Landing? We can you have a sense. I think it's landing on more lab and Augur are having a joint session um, and then leaving another room available. But it's, I don't know that it's landing there, but I think that's the current proposal. Um, okay. It feels like it's sorting out favorably. Okay. Because I would just financially, I'd prefer not to get the third room. And honestly, kind of logistically, it's. Yeah, it uh, gets too confusing. It does. And I, I've already, room. the contract's already been signed. We'd have to start that whole process again. And yeah, nobody wants to do that. <laughs> no. One, Baturgia has been great to like yep. help. Get that rolling and kind of the less i have to coordinate with people who are helpful the better for me yeah absolutely yeah okay. and for for those who aren't sure what we're talking about um we have an afternoon um session that we were trying to sort out that's like a more of a breakout session more workshoppy 
but we only have two spaces and we had three ideas for things. So we were trying to figure out if we needed to get another space, if we needed to combine some ideas or how we wanted to do it. So um, that's kind of what we're talking about right now. And it sounds like we are down to maybe combining some ideas into keeping it to, to our two rooms. Yeah, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, because what we want is then people to come back to the main room and have a closing keynote, a wrap up, more discussion, and then we're going to do like a small social event. So I think that's also kind of feeds into that. If we have three people, you know, three different spaces, like trying to wrangle everybody back is a little trickier. But if we have two, that's a little easier, especially if oh, it's nice. one of them are already in the space and we just need to bring the others in. So that we get, yeah, go ahead. Who is that, Katie? Is yeah, is there a way to have two of those breakouts happening in the same room? We talked about that and the I think that was on the Slack yesterday, the general thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that we would uh, we'd have a software meeting more generally for Grimoire Levin Auger. That was the proposal. And I think Daniel and Georg and I are still sorting out the details, but we're all pretty good with it. Yeah, I think they thought it would be a little too distracting to have those two things happening in the same room, Katie. Um, it is a good idea for sure, but just not sure how that would play out because it's not a huge room. Uh, I was like, if you do circle a circle table with people around it, and sometimes those conference centers have those little portable divider uh, accordion walls that they can just bring into a room that are about seven or eight feet tall. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if ours has that or not. That's interesting. I could ask about that. That probably wouldn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah. good idea. We didn't use it last time, but it may exist. Yeah. Is there a, um, is there a reason we don't want to have the keynote in the morning? Like at the end of the morning? Could we fit it? Yeah, the idea about the keynote being at the end was to bring people back together, but if that is proving like too much of a risk, then I, I'm i open to changing how we do that. I think we'd be able to guarantee an audience for a higher profile person that way. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, how Which much- has been one of the concerns. Yeah, how much room in the schedule is there? You have a, or just like a sense, is there? Uh, let's look. And I don't want, I know Don is doing the schedule, so I don't want to like- yeah mess it all up <laughs> guess what don we totally changed the schedule while you were <laughs> good luck um yeah uh i mean so it just it would just push lunch back probably yeah if so you're saying to just completely take this one out and move it well that was my like move it into like this. start a new or something like that you know what I, I mean I think that's I think that's a reasonable proposal and we should when we meet next week after the chaos meeting just get Don to you know get Don's perspective before we go all the way mm -hmm. yeah I like the closing keynote personally um but uh maybe there's room for yeah something in the morning also I, I mean I don't mind it at the end of the day it's just I've I just really worry about attendance. Yeah, that, I think that's the risk that was being discussed is if we get a high profile person that's at the end of the day and people don't come back, then we kind of look bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe there's a high profile person that doesn't care, <laughs> that loves us anyway, and would just come anyway, just to hang out with us. <laughs> Somebody's so rich, what does it matter? Right. You got any war? Got any Warren Buffett connections over there, Matt? Uh, I've seen him once. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, we'll think about it. Um, let's put this in here on their schedule. How do we feel about a late morning keynote? Okay. Cool. Oh, I also wanted to ask about live streaming. I know we haven't talked about that at all. And our website says we will not have it, but I wanted to make sure that that was actually the case. Because I don't know. Well, um, I just got a camera back. So, I mean, we have the equipment. Yeah, I mean, I can live stream from the equipment I have as well. We definitely have tons of equipment to do it. Are we able to get that equipment over to Brussels, I guess, is the question. I bring it everywhere I go, so. Okay. So, the, so yes. 
it'll be there. Um, <laughs> and uh, if we have somebody to like watch over that and run it. Yep. Yeah. And part of me is like, what if, I mean, my, my first thought is what if we like help offset travel costs to have somebody come and do that? I mean, yeah, if we got the, if we have the funds for it, for sure. You know, um, mm -hmm. so if, if like perhaps somebody on this call or somebody in the community would like to attend, um, and that would be essentially the job of doing live streaming. It's just a thought. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone to operate the equipment. Yep. Because it's, I mean, it's a job for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's four yeah, hours yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. When we've done it before, there's been a person focused on just that the whole time. Yeah, exactly. And I think in the past, like, I know Vinod is on, but like, it, it was like Vinod and Matt, Matt, can do. Matt would do it and Kevin mm -hmm. would help. Yeah. So, and Vinod, you're not planning on going, I assume. Uh, yes, it was a full time job. Like, I was fully focused. Even in that job, I missed one of the participant audio. The recording was there and the audio was missed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you're not planning on going to Brussels, are you? No. Okay. Visa issues is still. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but I'm planning for uh, Open Source Summit North America. So if that comes, I can help you on the recording side of it. Thing okay. In the future. I'm, I kind of like this idea, though, of maybe trying to support travel costs. Yeah. Somebody would like to volunteer. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up. If someone for me. does, if someone does want to volunteer for this, how do? What do they do? Just mention it in CASCON. Yeah, reach out to me. Reach out to you. Whomever. There's a chaos on channel on Slack. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And just so people know, ChaosCon is February 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it would be great if we are able to provide this, because I know there's a ton of people that would like to attend, but it's just yeah. hard to get there. So, yeah, that would be great if we can do it. Even if we just do it through YouTube. I think we did that once, just live streamed it through YouTube. Yeah, nothing fancy. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, cool. Any other questions or comments, anything on ChaosCon EU that people want to talk about? All righty. Matt, would you like to talk about Chaos One Visual? Sure. Uh, so I didn't know if I should call it an infographic or what we should call it. It's, I've learned in my... <laughs> budding relationship with Canva that it's called a mind map. <laughs> mind map, right. Yes, you I, you mentioned that on the uh, on the metrics model call. Let's just change that here. <laughs> so we're officially using the right words. So basically, just so people understand, so in, obviously in the chaos project, we produce metrics. So those metrics can be like, time to first response, they could be license coverage. We have about 80 different metrics and the metrics alone individually over the course of many years, we kind of learned they're not that helpful just kind of as an individual atomic thing. So that is why we created metric models. So metric models are collections of maybe three to four metrics that can tell a little bit more complete story. So a metric model, for example, could be community responsiveness, and it would be three metrics that uh, measure different types of responsiveness in a community. So maybe responsiveness to issues, responsiveness to pull, pull requests. Um, another metric model could be community welcomingness, as an example. Um, one metric model that 
is fully deployed is event diversity and inclusion badging. So that's the use of, I don't know how many metrics we have right now, but bringing, you know, maybe, is it seven metrics, Elizabeth, in that? It doesn't matter, four, five. So it's some smaller collection of metrics um, that help event organizers think about centering DEI within their events. So that's what metric models are. What you're looking at here is um, a way to kind of think about metric models in um, in situations that that you might find yourself in within a community or within an organization. So as you're trying to do things with metric models, this mind map is intended to help you do just that. So we have in the center there what we're calling for the right now chaos one, which was Dawn's starter project health metric model. And it has four metrics associated with it. And so what this mind map is saying is when you're interested in contribution health, first deploy this metric model, chaos one, take a look at these four things, all right? To help you get an idea or get some centering on contribution health. Once you're done with that deployment, if you want to improve responsiveness within your community, here's a couple more metric models that you could consider to better understand responsiveness and how changes that you make within your community might affect responsiveness. Or in the bottom left, if your focus is to improve release frequency, here's a metric model that you might wanna think about deploying when you're contemplating review frequency. So the idea here is to kind of help people along a path on things that they're trying to do um, within their particular community, because not everybody wants to do everything. And so we're trying to kind of guide people through our metric models in order to make you know more data-driven informed decisions. And then on the blue over there, I don't like how this is laid out, but um, this is, kind of how you would understand the that particular like green bubble like it's kind of a it's it's a provided interpretation of when you're looking at that data what you might want to think about when you're looking at that data in those purple or green circles and to so be those, clear the those the blue boxes point to other metric models no those are those are just really like yeah i took it from don's comment those are just like comments on how you might want to think about these things. Okay. The more there are metric models with highly similar names to the ones in the blue boxes. Yeah, that's I yeah, that's understandable. But yeah. well, I mean, look, if you look in the blue circle, see how it says communication act or the purple circle, see how it yeah. says communication activity. Activity, yeah. And so it's just community activity describes blah blah blah. It like kind of gives yeah, a yeah. description of what that's about. Okay. So like I said, I don't like how that's cool. laid out cuz it it does create some confusion. Time to up the canvas skills. Yep. I, time to level up. <laughs> Only been at it for a month. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, the idea here is that this one that Elizabeth is showing, sort of, can you screen zoom back out a little bit? Contribution health. We would create another one for, say, um, viability so we have a variety of metric models around viability so like on page two that's empty we would have viability as another kind of if you're trying to understand the viability of projects that you would like to include within your own work then here's a way here's a way to get started on thinking about viability um, behind each one of these pages like page one page two we'll have a blog post that provides more detail kind of a narrative around each one, um, as well as obviously direct connections to the respective metric models. So you can take a closer look at, at those definitions. So that's that. Anybody have questions for Matt or questions in general about this? We're gonna be doing this work in the metric model meeting, which just happened this morning and is not going to happen for another month <laughs> just because it's Thanksgiving week in two weeks. So if you'd like to join and participate or hear more about that conversation, that's the place to go.
I might add to um, just for metric models, we're also talking about um, creating metrics models as ISO standards. So each one of those metric models that we use, um, we're talking about going through a process with the support from people at the Linux Foundation to actually take the markdown file that describes the metric model and uh, turn them into ISO standards. So it's been a very positive conversation so far. So same, if anybody has an interest in, in standards development and would like to kind of help, you know, move that process from where we're at right now, which is just some markdown files into more um, properly formatted and edited files that are more ISO centric. Uh, I'd love to have, uh, love to have you contribute. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I that was a good thing to mention here. Yep. I honestly think that ISO standard one for folks that are maybe new to open source or new to the chaos community, this would be a really, really accessible place to start. I don't know anything about standards myself, like <laughs> absolutely nothing. Um, but folks at the well, folks at the Linux Foundation would really help that process. So I think what needs to be done is is just some editing and some cleanup and you know, it'd give you a chance to work with folks in the Chaos Project as well as folks at the Linux Foundation. This is a really I nice think a, I think a lot of it's just gonna be reshaping content to fit so the too. specification protocol. Yep. I think so too. Um and how to like express this out to the community, like here's where the work currently stands. Maybe we need a little bit of a workflow just so we understand which models have been, you know, completed and which are not. But can be pretty pretty straightforward to do. So I'd love to work with folks on that. Matt, is this something you, that you think would benefit from having a project manager helping with this? Like, should we bring this to that group and get a volunteer there? Um, or is it that's like too much? Like it's not that deep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's not do that until I hear back from Jory to okay. find out like what the level of complexity is that's required to move this forward. Okay. So I think just so people know, this probably wouldn't happen until 2024. Yeah, I think we can say that about all the things we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Already starting to eye the new year. Yeah. yeah. This is the chill part of chaos. Yeah. The unchaotic yeah. part of chaos. Or, yeah. Okay, thanks. That's it for me on that one. All right. And then I think you probably put this one on about the yeah, t-shirt. So I'm, I'm just so people know I'm getting some t-shirts made. My The big thing is I actually have um, new t-shirts that should address Sean's desire for slightly thicker t-shirts as well as <laughs> my own my own quirky tastes. Yeah, well, so it's the canvas t-shirts, so which are very nice t-shirts for those of you that don't know. Um, and I'm just trying to get these printed. Um, again, I'd still love to send them out to folks so that they're not just here in the US. Um, one of the things I am doing is I'm trying to make sure that the chaotic, it's that chaotic logo is what I'm going to print on there, that it's um, not just that kind of like waxy or plasticky print, you know what I'm talking about? Like some logos just kind of have that. Yeah. It's just really plasticky. I'd like it to be somehow like sprayed onto the t-shirt. I have no idea how any of that stuff works, but something that's I, a little bit faster, you know, like that's this, this. Yeah, that that's the logo. And I basically don't want it like just a, you know, what I'm talking about just a giant piece of plastic, like a cross, like kind of like pressed onto the shirt. That's not what I'm hoping for. Something a little bit softer. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense screen screen something screen That's printed cool. isn't that when it's like kind of plasticky plasticky yes yeah and i don't know what the other one is that's not plasticky <laughs> i don't either we need a t-shirt i'm sure we're using all the proper words <laughs> right. yeah i'm sure <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> all right cool thanks matt yep. for doing that
Um, yeah. Is this going to be available to who? Like, how would people get one of these? I don't know. I've talked to Ruth about this like okay. time, and time again. Just yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just so nervous to send like a big box of things because yeah. I have sent things like globally before and they I just disappear into the void. Yeah. I have too. I think globally, I tried to send like, her a, a sweatshirt from Yahui because Yahui couldn't get it to her. So he sent it to me, for me to send to her and we still couldn't get it to her. I've so. tried to send things to Sella. I've tried to send things yeah. to Christy. Like it just, I, they just go away. Yeah. And so like assembling a whole box of things <laughs> just sounds like, a, like I'll just lose a whole box instead of just a sweatshirt. Can she get some printed in her, like, you in can. Her yeah she's done that like the chaos africa t-shirts yeah she prints those there or yeah. somebody does yeah that seems like an easier route mm -hmm. yep so the hope is is that at least, at least i'll get a nice design and i can at least just share it with her and she can print them there yeah. and i can get the funds needed yeah that makes sense um district oops distribution tbd yeah all right cool yay i can't wait to wear one uh i will wear it everywhere it'll be great people will ask me about it it'll be awesome uh okay so let's move on chaos africa updates i know ruth is not on the call today but um any of the other community members from Chaos Africa want to just let us know kind of what's going on in that part of the world. Maybe Mary Blessing, not to put you on the spot, <laughs> but if you want to say anything or anybody else, that'd be great. And if there aren't any, that's also totally valid and completely fine. Anybody want to jump in from <laughs> Chaos Africa? There's a bunch of you on here. So I know somebody knows what's going on. <laughs> Mary Blessing said she's in a noisy place. Oh, Busayo. Oh, okay. She she tossed it over to Busayo. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um. Yes, I'm definitely on sports right now. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to like recollect some of the things we discussed last time. Okay, so we have um some contributors from Lume, which I know most of us know about already. And yeah, it's been going really well. Then the All In Africa program has kick started. And yes, I've been seeing like a lot of reactions on LinkedIn, people excited that they are joining in. And yeah, I knew there should be lots more, but that's what I can remember off the top of my head now. Sorry, everyone. No, that's yeah. excellent. That's totally fine and perfectly, yes. Yes, that's great. So Basayo, did you say that, um... All in Africa had started. Is that right? Yeah. Um, okay. cool. um people that got in got email, I think on Monday, those that we accepted. Okay. Yes. So the program has started officially. How long is the program? Um, so a cohort is starting, cohort one is from November to January 2024, I believe. January 31st, 2024, if I'm okay. not wrong. Okay. And then is it kind of the same um February Mary Blessing said? Okay. So is it the same, like is it kind of the same the way that all in for students had run the first time around, like here in the US, that there's companies that are involved? Just kind of curious. So the um, students I really don't know. So I can't give an update okay. on that. Do you yeah. know Elizabeth? Yeah, I can speak to it a little. Um, I think it's mostly, um, so actually that's a conversation that is being had right now. Um, because like for all in for students, sometimes there will be special 
um, internship opportunities, for instance, uh, from a sponsoring company like yeah. Fidelity or Cisco or somebody. Um, and they're like a corporate partner of the project. So um, they will offer special things. Um, a lot of those don't necessarily translate over into Africa or are available in Africa. So I think that's something Ruth um, and the all in for students community manager are working out of like, what can we do for okay. these students, for these folks? Um, but yeah, the as far as like the structure of it is very similar. There's a curriculum that they'll go through and um, hackathons and some other activities that they have to complete in order to graduate. So okay. yeah, that's awesome. All right. Thank you, Busayo. I appreciate you. Sorry to put you on the spot, but we do appreciate that very much. We have six minutes left. Is there anything else we want to chat about? What else? I'm good. Seems like everybody else is pretty good too. Nobody's yeah. raising, nobody's shouting. All right. No shouting. That's good. No shouting. <laughs> No shouting at all. Um, well, have these have this five minutes back now. It's five. So I hope you guys have a rest, a good rest of your day, and we'll see you here next week. Yes, the same time, the week after. Yes, yes. Week back. after is head Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> all right, bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 bye.